Mm. Oh, hey, it's Kip K from Make Magazine with another weekend project. Mm, all toys. The curiously strong mint developed way back at the turn of the 19th century, and now over 200 years later, who would have thought that this little minty tin would become such a popular container for all sorts of projects? If you do a search on Magazine alone, you'll find a 9-volt USB charger kit, you'll find a solar theremin, Arduino on the go, a handheld barbecue, and even an Altoids tin guitar. Today, we're gonna to continue that trend as we make a portable and powerful headphone amplifier that you'll find in Make, Volume 4. But first, got to do something with all of these little mints. Okay, let's make it. A link for the complete parts list and schematic for the Mint Tin Amp is included with the PDF for this project. You're going to need a circuit board for starters, and this one we're going to score and snap in half. Then we need to make a bunch of jumpers, so hopefully you have some leftover capacitor or resistor snips, or some small wire. And we're going to form the jumpers and solder those all into place. Then we need to solder in the two 220 microfarad caps and the two 10K resistors. Here's a cheap trick for keeping your soldering tip clean. Instead of buying one of those copper soldering pads, just go to the dollar store and get a copper scrubbing pad and put it in a little container. It works exactly the same and it's about a quarter the price. We've soldered in our two 100K resistors and also the leads going to our red LED, which will serve as our power light. Now to test this power supply portion of the amp, you're gonna use a multimeter, get your nine volt battery power source. And after checking the voltage, we're gonna make contact with the positive and negative hookup wires. And our voltage should be split in half or real close. If that's the case, then you've soldered in everything correctly without any bad contacts. Then we're going to solder in our IC socket for our amplifier section and also the remaining resistors. To test this build out, you're going to need about a half dozen alligator clip jumpers and hook those up to the test points. If you want to make an impact online, GoDaddy.com has what you need. .com names as low as $1.99, plus world-class hosting, fast and easy website builders, and much more. Plus, as a viewer of the Make Podcast, enter code MAKEMAG, that's M-A-K-E-M-A-G, when you check out, and save an additional 10% on any order. Some restrictions apply. See site for details. Get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com. Okay, we've hooked up all of our alligator clips to all of our test connections, to our headphones, our MP3 player. Uh, time to apply some power now to our amp. Our little red LED comes on indicating power. Headphones on and power up our MP3 player. And yes, we are getting sound in both channels, which is important. I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear this or not. Not sure how well that'll be uh, able to be heard on video, but we are getting stereo sound. It sounds pretty good. And now it's time to put everything into our Altoids tin and make our final connections for our headphone amp. Then we need to put in our amplifier, our nine volt battery, then start lining up where all the remaining components are gonna go. The volume control, the input and output audio jacks, and the power switch. To protect the circuit board from shorting out, I cut out a small piece of thin rubber and laid it in the bottom of the Altoids tin. Okay, the finishing touches on our mint tin amp are done, including our power switch, our input and output jacks, and also our volume control. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug everything in. Headset on. MP3 player on and powered on mint tin amp. And here we go. Let's hit play. Oh, it cranks. And the volume control works great. And there's the Altoids Mint Tin Amp. 
Just one more Altoids project for you to tackle. And we'll see you next week with another weekend project. Thank you.